This is going to be a canned audio recording that is going to go in front of a lot of my videos for the next few weeks. And it's just another reminder that if you came to this channel and subscribed just because of the Motu Patlu video, I'm going to remind you one more time that that's not my usual style of content. I usually make Let's Play, Splatoon 2 guides, and some other random videos, which is the category that the Motu Patlu thing fell under. So if you're specifically looking for that stuff out of me, you're probably not going to find it too often, and I honestly don't have a good idea for another video of that type in my mind right now. Maybe I'll do a sequel for that, but that's all I got. So I really won't be offended if you unsubscribe now, because subscribing just from that video is kind of giving yourself an incorrect impression of what my channel's actually like. But if you want to see whatever video this is actually attached to, go right ahead. If this is the first episode of this series you decided to watch, I would recommend starting off from the beginning or at least watching the last few because this is picking up right after a huge plot development and you might be a little too entirely lost if you jump in straight at this. Also, the minute to two minute intro thing is an intentionally cheesy anime OP style intro that I've been doing for the entirety of this series, just kind of going along with how anime I tend to think this game is. This is the first episode, the third one's on, and it's it's kind of the cheesiest of the bunch, so if you want to see that, you came to the right video. Okay, uh, let's actually watch the thing now. Uh, well, I opened the game and this happened, so rest in fucking peace, my dude. Hello everyone, this is Luxon. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles Claws Encounters of the Third Kind, where my weird title pun actually makes sense this time because we fought the cat people last episode. Also, we got, um, the Skell Flight Module allowing us to, uh, fly, which, I don't know about you, that's kind of important. Uh, and this episode, because of the whole fact that last time was huge and on me, Did you hear? we're just gonna do... <laughs> So, a little self-indulgence this time, since I think we could do to not do much plot this time. And... Just kind of dick around in our flying scales and see what exactly we could do with them. I think that's a good good waste of time. And by waste of time, I mean... It's gonna be a fun video, because I'm gonna manage to get myself killed a, a, a large amount of times. So... So, we've got this guy named Fry here. I've also got an affinity mission here. Uh, let's see. It's an A button. Okay, bottoms up. A Silvalum nighttime mission where fog is restricted. It's only level 19, which is eh. But there is a new affinity mission here, and you know what? Screw it, I'm taking Alexa, because I just kind of randomly got her. Um, only problem with that is there aren't other party members over there. Um... 
I'll grab HB. Mm, do I want to grab HB? It's HB. You know, we're already on the way to getting HB, so let's get HB. And then go back and do that affinity mission. Alright, we got the asshole himself, and I was originally going to say, Oh, I can give skills to the party members that I take with me. And then I realized that these two are both between level 20 and 30, so I only have one skill to go around between the two of them. But, uh, I'm also just going to give myself Elysium back, and, like, not give anyone else a skill for the time being, just so I can save on fuel. But, I'll re-register it to me, because it did get deregistered from us in the last episode, because we had to use the prototype flying thing for that mission. But, we're going to accept Bottoms Up, and I'm going to finish it this episode, but... I'm not sure how much of the episode is going to be dedicated to actually doing this mission, if you get my drift. Hmm, guess I'm out of options. thinking what I'm thinking? Wouldn't be here if you weren't, right? Perfect. Let's drink. I'm buying. So what? Have juice! Or milk, or whatever you kids are drinking these days. All I'm asking for is a little company while I tip a few back. to go till dawn right then you ready for the main event you gotta ask cracking indigent skulls of course what else would an interceptor do anyway guess i never introduced myself the name's fry the rest of the interceptors call me the killer ostrich worst nickname ever right well i love it I'm always taking the dangerous jobs nobody else will touch with a 10-foot pole. Hence the nickname. Well, the killer part, anyway. I take it as a compliment. But it means I gotta nick some nasties today if I wanna keep my rep. Care to join me? Seeing as we're old pals and all now? <laughs> Good energy. I like you. Let's you and me knock this baby out of the park. Today's mission is Critter Cleanup on Silvalu. There's a lot of them. It'd be a hassle to explain it, so just check your comm device later, okay? We'll take them out in the order they're listed. Okay, I know I say, like, every freaking episode that I love every party member in this game, but... <laughs> Fry's not an exception, he's great too. It's like, I, I don't know. That's the thing, Tatsu's the only bad character in the game. So, everyone's immediately paints a bad picture of it just because he's in it, but no. Everyone else except Tatsu is good. And you're wrong if you think otherwise. I'm sorry. Anyway, Fry is a Samurai Gunner Plus. So, sort of similar to Nagi, he has Gatling Gun, at, well, and Lin, but, you know. He has Gatling Gun as his ranged weapon, and a longsword as his melee weapon, so... He's a combination DPS at- well, wait. Those are the same weapons that Nagi uses, I'm smart. He just... has different arts on them, basically. So he serves a different purpose. Nagi's more like overall DPS, I think Fry's supposed to be more for crowd control. But... Uh, that's- that's all I got now. I would immediately give myself my scale back and get going, but I'm going to check the mission board just to make sure there aren't any basic missions in Silvalum. Alright, there was a good reason to come here, because we got a side quest for killing Asana the Azure Star, which is a tyrant that I've been able to kill already, I think, solo with Elysium, so uh, that's going to be some free experience and some free affinity with Fry. That was some really good alliteration. I'm... Almost proud of myself on that one. Also, this guy's here, and we kind of ignored him a lot last time, so we'll see what he has to talk about. Oh, he's got that... <laughs> his voice clip is just, damn. This guy, regular Shadow the Hedgehog over here. So, some chump has gone. Oh, you know me, that's a problem. I am a thieving little punk, apparently. 
Oh, oh, this guy. This guy. <laughs> oh, this guy is just really, really pissed that we're doing good at Frontier Nav. Which is kind of... Oh, this guy doesn't want to save humanity. He just wants money. This is... How did so many assholes get on the ship? That's... I'm gonna take the moral high ground, and as you can see, all my party members like that, but... Alright. So I need a wager. Okay. 70,000 credits in a single Frontier Nav tick. Which I don't think I have right now, and... I... Okay, he's just gonna bloat, go gloat words. I'm not gonna restructure my probes to do that right now. I'm already getting too much meranium to know what to do with, so... Yeah, I don't know. Alright, I got my skill set. No one on Friar HB. I did decide to change my mind and give Alexa the level 20 skill just to... Uh, finally make her dreams of being a skill pilot a reality. But... And, of course, Elysium's on myself, because that's my personal skill, being the best one, because that's how I roll. Um, I do believe we can do Chapter 10 immediately, so I might do that sooner rather than later, just for reasons. We'll, just, we'll call it reasons, but that's not this episode. So, normally, I, I almost was say, okay, we're going to fast travel like I always do, but we're going to do something cooler than fast traveling. We're going to cut out the rest of this loading screen. We're gonna get in our scale, named after something from the game that comes out in 17 days. Um, that direct made me fail No Nut November, so the game better be worth it. And every time I try to do something, <laughs> it's always raining. So we're gonna have to get out of NLA for anything interesting looking, unfortunately. And I just realized When I was recording footage for the, um, intro, I turned off, like, the entire UI. So, let's see, get the minimap back on. Get the scale fuel gauge back on. That back on. Uh, squad test indicators, sure. Level indicators, sure. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. System data saved. There we go, that's stuff that actually- oh, wait. I don't want the division support prompts, because that's something different. I We're getting there. Division support prompts off. I think that actually does move the scale fuel gauge. Oh, it doesn't move it up, but... Whatever, it's better than nothing. Looks... Insert made a number 9 joke here, but it... I also installed the data packs, so things should be loaded better. You can actually almost see Oblivia off to the east now, which is good. And if you go over this way, yeah, the one thing that's kind of disappointing is you can never get high enough to see three continents at once. You could see, obviously, Primordia and... I can't tell if that's the blue part of Noctilum or if it's just not loaded. Okay. Yeah, because we can see Primordia, we can see where it bleeds into Noctilum now. And now Oblivious off screen. And surprisingly, we're actually almost... I have a squad task indicator up. I need to get rid of that. Okay. Video game. I... Off? Okay. Third time's the charm. There we go. Unfortunately, I'm sure this makes sense just for, like, actually being able to display the entire environment and stuff, but there is a relatively low max height limit, which is... I don't know. It's annoying, and... You have to kind of do that with other skills to get them to not stick to it, but... You can still see entire continents from here, and that looks cool. It's just slightly disappointing that you can't see multiple ones off in the distance, because I'd have to fly over here, and why well, the time Oblivia comes into view, you can't see any of Noxalum. Also, the residential district kind of looks flat from here, but enough criticism. But we're here to play a really... That is a great voice attack. We're here to play a really good video game that I want to share with people, because it's not only underrated, it's also kind of underplayed. Also, there's a third one in the series coming out, and I figured this is a decent time to draw up interest in this one. For coming down here, is this the floating island with a tyrant, or the one with a probe? I don't remember. Come to think of it, there might not be any floating islands with probes here in Primordia. I'm also gonna try my best- oh, there's a thing here. Oh, because of the level 50 sight type enemies. Alright. 
This is your first episode of the series. Um, you're gonna see how... Oh, Mechanical 5. Okay. It teaches me to... I, I went there last episode. That's the problem with not recording this for two weeks. I forget what I tried to do already. But... Now we can actually get a better look up top here of not only like a rent bridge and how the game handles shallower and deeper water, which is just kind of cool to look at from a visual perspective. It's a lot like a game that I'm forgetting here. I don't know. A lot of games do that where the shallower water is just lighter colored and the deeper water is darker color because that's kind of how water actually looks. But it's cool how they do sort of have a gradient drop off rather than it being like a flat ledge. Which a lot of things do. And there we go. I think we were never looking up when we were here before. Because we're too high to target these things now. But um, these are Setos. And the big one's a Tyrant, if I remember correctly. Still yeah, Balaenas. That also makes sense, because whales. And these are sort of like Sky Whales. Though I want to check the Tyrant here. Drake in the Drifting Cloud. I think that's like a not always appearing one off the top of my head. I'm not entirely sure, but he's a big boy and we don't we don't tussle with the big boys. Also, this is another cool thing. You thought this little stretch of islands in between Primordia and Silvalum was a unique thing. Just like, hey, there's stuff outside the continents proper. No, you could see that little island over there. And if you look... This is a thing, if you're, I don't, I still can't record the gamepad, so you're not going to see that. I do want to revisit this LP in the future when I have a better grasp on everything in the game. But well, first off, you could just discover Silphalm Waters as a region. And second off, there are quite a few of these just islands here. Which I think is really cool. It rewards you for exploration, because th th these islands have good things on them. They're not just there to have something to find. And also, there are item crystals just kind of flying in midair too. Unfortunately, this one has... Have I ever been here? I don't know if I've ever been here. Because I don't... I would have remembered an island that's just a tyrant. Although there is an archaeological thing. I'm going to assume this is level 5 here. This is a small coronid and a tyrant. That's actually really cool. I'm not sure if I've ever been to this island. And this is mechanical level 4, so it's actually something I can get, too. Uh, a lot of these... Uh, okay, this one was just experience and money, probably because it's so close to Silvalum itself. But the further out you are, the better rewards for these things you're going to find. Uh, case in point, there's another one right there. I forgot this one was so close. But you can get some ridiculously good augments from these that you can only get from them. Like, they're not ones you can craft anywhere. And they're not ones that you often find naturally on stuff, so... Not only does it reward you for exploration just within the continents, it rewards you for exploration just anywhere. You could theoretically go to any of these places just by swimming, even before you have a regular scale, but, like, why would you ever do that? Flying is just the coolest and most efficient way to do any of this stuff. And as you can see here, this is a bit of a bigger island. I think I spy a piece of white whale wreckage over there, though. Um... No enemies. Oh, big, more big enemies. Does this one have any treasure on it? Oh, this has a stupid amount of Forfexes, as well as a uh, big Zig Tyrant. I, there is a treasure here. There is at least one. I think I could see it. It is a Schlong scale. I'm going to try landing here. And I'm going to warp into Silphalum if this kills me, just because... Alright, the Zig is still a sight and sound type enemy. Four effects are safe. They're Lazuli four effects, which kind of cool. I'm sure there are Lapis ones somewhere. Alright. Hide behind this rock. Okay, uh, okay frontline surveillance Zig. Looks like you're going to have to actually be able to kill that thing if you want to get anything from here, and I'm sort of sorry, Alexa. It better than... Okay, I lived. That's good to hear. Good to know. I, I'm i assuming they made its like actual range small on purpose so that you don't die to it. My problem here is <laughs> getting on top of this part of the island. There we go. Thought I'd have to return to Skell to get in here. Also, I probably mentioned it before when we were actually in the 
like on our way to Silvum the first time, which is actually the first time we had Alexa. But the intercontinental water theme is really cool. I'm not going to show it off too much now because it's been like 20 minutes and we haven't done anything for the affinity mission. And I think it would kind of be a good idea to, first off, do what I said I'd do at the beginning of the video and actually get Fry as a member of our party by the end of this. Although, I'm going to go to one more place, which is this thing. I'm not sure if this is a mountain, this is a temple. This sort of reminds me of the temple on Valak Mountain in the first game. But there's this, I guess you could call it a shaft. It's the Cavernous Abyss, although... Surprisingly enough, this is just a thing full of enemies and not actually a bottomless pit like the Yawning Giant is in Oblivia. And if I remember correctly, thankfully the centimeters up there won't notice us if we're careful. But, oh! Abyss Reservoir! Secret area, that's a thing. Uh, Strong Unifolges, Behemoth the Nether Dweller. That's a pleasant, pleasant name you got there. There's this thing. Oh! Is that a skell? The skell parts? Or there's like. Oh! That's a tyrant! Okay! Not a tyrant, that's an enemy! It's a bad thing! That's a dying fry. And. Okay, good. We could still cheese the level design and completely go around that cantor over there. To get this thing, mechanical too. This deep in a big cave, that's interesting. Alexa got a level up, which is nice. It was good to see her doing things. Fortunately, Fry still hasn't leveled up. I'm gonna need to find, like, a way to kill. Alright, I'm he should level up a couple times from killing Asana the Azure Stone. Oh, statue Centimere, that's not a good. Thankfully the detection ranges are relatively small. And that's a hiding cantor. My secret here is gonna be that that one's an enemy. That's not the treasure, that's an enemy. I think. Okay, if this rises up out of the ground and tries to kill me, I'm gonna be... Okay, Arky 2! Alright, small experience. It's more for the money. And I think BP. Some of these give you BP. But, that's just another thing that's there. And it's cool. And... Once I get out of this fight... By... Wow, they have a really high vertical detection range, but not a high horizontal one. Okay. I was wrong. I thought the probe for that region was actually in that segment of the map, but it's not. It's over here somewhere. And I can't see it, which means it's the one down there in the ganglion base. Okay. I know how these things work. Oh, there it is. There it is. This is one that's probably a lot easier to reach if you can fly. I might have been here before. This might be the Mechanical 5. Oh no, I've never discovered this FN site, so this isn't the Mechanical 5. It is the Mechanical 5, never mind. Okay. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I clearly am good at this game. I discovered the Lesser Anvil, that thing. We're still finding stuff in Silva, though. This is... Oh, this. Okay. I'm gonna go over here. Just to show this off, I think we've discovered the Anvil Sand Plane already, so that bigger general area of Silvalum we've already discovered. Okay, oh! We aggroed it! Shit! Okay, that big thing is Luxar Zern! Yeah, that's an enemy. That's Alexa Skelgon. I might die here. I'm... Yeah, uh, I'm dead. My scale's dead, I might not be dead, but that happened. That is Luxar's base. Oh, there's also one of his particle effects still flying at us, and that's going to hit me and do no, jam no damage, hopefully. But that base thing that he was shown, like, always being in and talking to people in, that's there. That's really cool that that's actually an enemy you can fight. Unfortunately, um... Defeating it won't, like, end the story there. Oh, you killed Luxar. But it's still cool that that's a thing. Um, since I'm without a scale and I'm going to need to warp back anyway, it's worth showing off here in Silvalum, in the South Silent Sand Sea. Uh, level 41 Lethal Lunafolges that are probably going to also one-shot me. But that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for that thing that looks sort of like a flower in the sand. 
and uh, this could take a bit of running because distances, but wow, those guys are kind of persistent. They're way back there. Uh, okay, they're gone. It's gonna be somewhat surprised. Remember this from Oblivia? This is Eterides the Distinguished, another huge-ass sandworm tyrant, except this one's a pollen worm. Uh, I'll meet you back at Lake Seal with my scale back. Guess who's back? Back again, getting aggroed by this thing for some reason. Guess you could show off aerial combat. Fry's dead already. This thing's not gonna get one-shotted by this, but... Well... It's gonna get pretty freaking close. Okay. Didn't expect that to do that well. I'm lucky Alexa's scale won't take huge amounts of damage. Okay, that was... that could have been a little better. Would be... oh no. Okay. Alexa, get out of your scale so it doesn't get destroyed again. And me, you're gonna run from that Z-Dom. I was gonna kill the small thing for easy XP, but the large thing happens to exist, and we don't like those. Now once I'm fully healed... Uh, is gonna find Asana the Azure Star, and I'm just gonna kill it again off-screen. Because you don't need to see me defeat a tyrant that I did take out pretty easily already. This one's just for a quest. And for leveling up Fry a little bit. That took uh, a very long time. Also, Fry got three levels. He's now level 19. <laughs> um, I guess that was pretty worth it. I think I got a net gain of fuel on the Elysium. Even though the level 20 scale got trashed again. As it does. But, I think it's finally time to, I don't know, actually kill the things that we were supposed to for Fry's mission, which happened to be not even in Silvalum that much, since you're supposed to barely be able, like, you can unlock this barely after you get Alexa. I think, like, obviously since Fog's restricted, they have a connection of some sort, so I think you just need level 16 and Fog to get this, so it's not actually a very difficult thing to unlock. But, now that we're here, and the... Okay, you know what? Screw you. You really think... Alright, I know I have, like, zero upgraded arts, but I kind of expected to do more damage to that in one hit. I'm also a support class, so, eh. But... Yeah, I just used all three of my attacking arts. I kind of have to wait for my party member to do anything. And I think Fry also has only two arts. I'm not entirely sure Alexa has a full set of eight, too. Um, this might have not been a smart option. At least I could just tank everything, and I have a scale. Oh, uh, yeah. Alexa classed up from that? I don't know, I'll take it. I'll actually check people's arts, though, just to see. Let's see, I do, I do have overclock, so since I'm not going to be fighting in scale, that's good. Let's see what other the hair trigger supercharge is kind of still an S status in my opinion. Uh, she got decoy rounds. We're not, <laughs> we're not giving her a taunt art. I'm getting rid of decoy round on HB too. Actually, give him flash grenades. A blackout art's better. Let's see what arts doesn't he have equipped? Well, decoy rounds and shield wall flame hand counters that. It doesn't even have a fire type thing. Uh, top on mechanoids, trash talk, and... Okay. So we basically made him an anti-lin. Yeah, Fry still has four. That's unfortunate. Check skills quickly, though. See, uh, Alexa still hasn't learned any. Four. Yeah, HB has a lot. Okay. Topple topper. Shield screen. Uh, we'll give him mighty muscle and steel flesh, because those just are objectively improvements. And then shield screen and topple topper. Combat pressure, kind of don't want him to have, just based on the fact that he's got... He's, he's not the strongest party member we've got right now, so we don't want him to tank things. Although, I think we only need to kill two of these level 13 enemies. After all that, Fry definitely didn't need three levels up for this. He even might be able to tank them himself. Although, my secondary accelerator 
meant that I was actually able to get Starfall Blade fully charged, and wow, we're gonna aggro everything with this. It, it did big damages, I'm okay with this. Uh, yeah, pull out the lightsaber. I should have upgraded Starfall Blade, at least. Although, oh, and I missed the Soul Voice, and that only did like 90 damage. I could really use some... Oh, I don't have my good weapons equipped. That makes sense. I was stupid. Also, I don't really need Geolibrium right now. I'll target the Sapphire Fork Fork Fex. Fork Fex. Just because... Killing the second one might automatically activate a cutscene. Which would be a lot easier than... Going somewhere. And they're having to fight the other level 10 ones. Okay. I don't even think I'm going to need Starlight Duster for this. Never mind, my weapon is ass. Let's just burn the Starlight Duster and still not kill this thing. There we go. Okay. Oh, now we just need to kill more stuff. Got it. And are, really, all these enemies are just going to be in the Seabird's Beak? It seems kind of weak, not just in terms of their levels, but in terms of exploring Silvalum, since they're... I don't know. I'm not a game designer, so I'm not gonna criticize everything they do, especially if this is one side quest in a game with tons of side quests, and also I like the game, so <laughs> you know. Let's see. Advanced soldier launchers. I think those are the best ones I got. Um Oh, no. Definitely the ones that give me Plus 27 to my total ranged attack. I think those are the best ones. Let's see. Plus 60, plus 50, plus 40. Oh, they're already sorted. I'm intelligent. Oh, this is this is going great. I hope everyone who is new to this channel from Motu Patlu is excited to see how bad I actually am at making videos. Oh, there we go. My auto attacks are now doing more damage than my other shit was before. Look at this. Uh, there's... There we go, Starfall Rondo. So the Blade Rondo combo actually did a lot of its HP. Which is better than I was doing before. Look at that, this thing's actually almost dead now. I kinda like the way this is going. Opaque Membrane, and Fry got an art which can only be good things, unless it's a bad art. In which case, it's still kind of better than nothing. Yeah, there we go. I also am kind of sad that I cut out the entire um, Tyrant fight, just because Alexa has a couple lines that are good if she's in a skell. When a skell's destroyed, she'll like, don't let this... I'm not going to let your sacrifice be in vain, baby. Like, referring to the skell as her baby, which is just nice in general. And not just an in-character thing. You know what? Use electric cloaks or lightning cloaks, why not? But she's also got like a cup. She has less skill voice lines than some of the other characters, which is kind of surprising given her character. I guess the DLC ones had a little bit less work put into them, or just in terms of lines. But whatever. We're gonna also fight Yoon the Ambusher because I don't think I've killed this thing before, and I'm a hundred percent sure we can take this like, Nihilego looking ass. If only just based on my level. And the fact that Alexa should use Overclock soon and... Well, also, we've done this much damage already. We're gonna... Holding R and hitting down is hotkey for making them come to you. Or your party members come to you. Which is good, because I want this thing to get over land so I can kill it. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna wait until I have Blade Rondo and Duster ready, just for the style points. Although, sure, at least use Lightning Cloak, even though I think this is a gravity enemy. I also am not entirely sure if this is even for a segment, but... We're killing it anyway, because it's there. I think Fry would appreciate the sentiment. Let's see. Did you just say time for some ownage? I, I don't know how to feel about this man now. Oh, you're too high to hit now. That's rude. It's very rude, actually. Can I really not hit you with melee attacks? 
Um, there we go. All right. Blade, Rondo, Duster. That did not a lot. I think it's resistant to beam, which is the only thing that really makes sense. My man, that's... It's a great voice line, honestly. I wonder if he actually has um, a different line if you're a female avatar. Because I know a couple cutscene lines do have different ones. Mostly in the beginning when they're like introducing you, they'll change the pronoun. But that'd be cool if... Well, I know Elma has different lines depending on whether your avatar is male or female. So probably that's a different thing. You can also like customize soul voices, so you might be able to get him to say it regardless. I don't know. I guess this thing's gimmick is just flying up out of melee range sometimes. Which is bad, because I don't know how many... Well, Alexa's got a... Oh no, she's got an assault rifle. She's not a regular partisan eagle. So, we don't have many ranged arts. I might just have to wail away at this thing with my... There we go. Oh, it self-destructed and almost killed everyone who wasn't me. That works, I guess. Okay. Did see that coming. I'm guessing we need to kill three of these guys. Ah, uh, HB, you're you just you just did like the natural line cancel into another line. Yeah, I don't even need to pull out the Starlight Duster on this thing. It got rid of half its health because it, I'm double its level, probably. I don't have much to say. We're just killing the same enemy. And not even getting a chance to attack if we keep doing this. And I use that early because it's a long soul voice line. And let's see. Ooh. Ooh. Hold on a minute. I see thing that piques my interest. And I have to take a look now. Let's see. I'm gonna just take. I'm, I'm gonna appreciate. Okay, I appreciate the name. I appreciate the reference in the name. Um, if you wanted to do that, maybe you could have made the entire character a reference. But I don't know. I can't really tell you what to do. There we go. I uh, dazzling light sewers. I think. Strange lights. Okay, dazzling are the ones on the uh, delusion summits. Which actually, I'm not sure fighting all three of these at a time is a good idea. But when have I ever had good ideas? Okay. Unfortunately, Alexa used burst grenade like right after, right before I called out the soul voice. And is that a strong sacrifice or a weak one? It's level 20. Okay, it's 21. Fry's the only one lower leveled. Uh, sure, we'll use Geolibrium. They actually want an aura from a soul voice, and sure. 80% critical damage, which is exactly why all three of those critted. Okay, I like this. I think I still have Geolibrium active, which means... Well, they got invincibility, which is nice. We killed the Lysior. Just keep targeting the Lysiers, we should be fine. And by we, I mean me. Because HB's gonna die in a second. Actually, I'm taking a decent amount of damage myself. I shouldn't count myself among the lucky ones. Uh, let's see, plus 400 damage from behind. Um, that did a lot of damage. Okay. Right, Abyssal Sacrifal. No, I'm not gonna... Fry's alive? Okay. Fry's not alive, never mind. I, this this could have gone a lot better. I, the actual party member I'm here to show off could have lived. But, you know. Hindsight's 2020. I could have not aggro this thing. I what killed me? The, what? Um. Did I aggro a Z-Dom or something? I don't think the Sacrifull was, like, one-shotted me or anything, because it's not strong enough to do that. Okay, these are next to an Avatar. 
Is this one an enemy? I don't think I aggroed one of those. I really doubt the Sacrifall, like, killed me. But to be safe, I can do this and one-shot you with my energy scythe of death. Or m miss, okay. This is going great! Alright. Now that I killed that thing, I should have smooth sailing for these guys, which I can cut out this time. Okay, it turns out that somehow I aggroed a Z-Dom, and that's what killed me both times, so... The game's not gonna play fair. First off, I could just find a group of these guys that don't have a Z-Dom near them. Like... There's some over here... that don't have a Z- Oh, I must have actually killed them before the Zedom aggroed me, because now we have to kill White Progen. Okay. It's going to be an interesting fight without a skill. Can actually show this. Though we're doing a little more damage than I expected, actually. I'm going to try to use my AoE attacks from over here, because I'm not sure if my party members can handle two of them at once. Um, that's the thing that kills me. Starfall Rondo has such a longer cooldown than Starfall Blade, so you can't reliably use them with their melee combo thing unless you wait for both of them to be ready. Although, now we got them both. Okay, it's legit. You get two Starfall Blades per Starfall Rondo, which is kind of a little weird. Aw, oh, this would be a good time to have a Starlight Duster be a good time to have any melee art. You're just gonna call two of them out at once. Alright, we aggroed the second one already, so... Sure. Oh, that could be useful. Reduce cooldown by 50%. It's a good. And Alexa is... I guess she was stunned or something. Because she wasn't dead. She's just kind of standing there. Alright, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna wait for... Both of them to double charge, just so you can see. Secondary Accelerator is a flat buff. It's pretty much literally... Or, one Rondo is... Two Blades. Although... I could let loose with the Starlight Duster that didn't actually do much damage, never mind. I don't know why I expect my super nuke attacks to actually do anything at this stage in my class progression. It'd be kind of nice to hit uh, rank 4, though. I think that's a skill, but, like... It'd be cool to have 8 arts again! Ah, uh, thank you, Alexa, for using Overclock, even though I'm almost filled back up on fuel. I'm actually almost dead, surprisingly. But nothing a Rondo can't solve. There we go. And... oh. Now we just need to kill a Puglo. Okay. Uh, Fry is nice and down to the and to the point, so you can just get to know him instead of, like, d d d cutscenes. And this is a tiny, this is a tiny Puglif. I almost feel bad for this thing, it was probably a bullied a lot in gangling school. Yeah, there we go. Is it toppled? Oh, it's not toppled, but, wow. This is easier than the Progen. Probably because Puglif are only difficult because... Their larger size means bigger firepower. And if you get a small one, it's not going to do, like, anything. Oh well, I, I appreciate the weak fight after dying so many times. You know what, screw it, you can... I feel bad for you, so I'll use a Starlight Duster on you. And that's a segment, so cutscene... Well, that takes care of that. Today was easy street. Didn't know I was in the company of a master. How useful. Hmm, let me see. I'd say four fingers of scotch, give or take. Hey, why the scowl? That's a lot. You have any idea how hard it is to make good booze here on Mira? It's the most precious thing we got. Well, after the life of the year. You should be proud. I'd work with you again any day. No question. That's what I'm saying. And I'm happy to help out with your mission.
missions too. Anytime you see me hanging around the diner, hit me up. And mission complete. We've got Fry actually with us now. There we go. Ah, uh, I wish there was more you could do, like about the, the whole killer ostrich thing. I don't remember if you actually ever learned the origin of it in his later missions, which is kind of unfortunate. But we now have only two party members left, and only one that'll actually show off in the main game, just for reasons. The, I'm gonna make one bonus video instead of actually taking care of stuff that I didn't do in the main game because again I want to revisit this let's play in the future and make a better one but I remember wanting to do something that required flying assuming the mission left us in Silverland but I already forget what it was because oh right I should end this off by actually showing what my favorite area in the game looks like from the sky you can also kind of go over here towards the top of the Noctilucent Sphere and see that they didn't really texture the top of it particularly well. Although, honestly, you're not going to get much big view from up top here. <laughs> Looks better from the distance anyway. Like this is Being on top of here isn't going to be too cool of a sight. You're going to want to actually like be away from it and look at it from a distance because... It's kind of how Silvum works. But we're now over here on the Delusion South Summit, and I kind of played up the actual maze aspect of it a little, a lot, but you can see that it is kind of windy, and there are a lot of places that it's really hard to get to without flying in general. Which is... It's nice. It's just a nice area. Although the Siluths in here either don't show up at night, or... Oh, there they are. Oh, uh, you got Anselm the Triumphant, you got Territorial Siluth, you got a lot of things. You got, this is a, uh, actually, do I have this site? I don't have this site, but I think it's a Mechanical 5. Which would make Silvalum. Ah, okay, Silvalum's a continent with two Mechanical 5 probes. I forgot that there were ones like that. I'm also not going to fight a Divine Lysier. I'm looking for... Actually, I shouldn't be looking for treasure. I should be looking for weak enough enemy that I can kill and actually get the other class rank. And uh, Sometimes there's a collectible like up top at the top of this thingy, which I always love. But... For the last... Last thing of this episode... Uh, I would like an enemy... Um, let's see, you're guarding a treasure I already have. Ah, let's see, you're guarding a treasure I don't have. Even though you can't, you won't notice me if I just try to get it. Unfortunately, you're just, you... I want the class rank to end this episode off. You maybe have another... Oh yeah, you can get put to sleep in a scale. It's interesting. Oh wow, that actually cock-blocked my taunt too. I'm also not sure where my party members ended up since I was flying. I don't think I gave them enough time to teleport back to me before I started the fight, so I think I'm completely alone here. Which is... It would be unfortunate if this thing could actually give me more trouble than putting me to sleep constantly and slightly annoying me. Also taking shock damage every couple seconds is me. I don't know. Ooh, I actually missed with that. Okay. See, if I didn't have an energy scythe... The, oh! Alexa used power dive! She, the, they're somewhere. I don't know where they are. They're sure as hell not actually doing damage to this thing. I, I don't know where my party members are right now. I'm sure they're trying their hardest, but... Uh, it wasn't enough. i did everyone level up from that? HB might not have, but I think they, there are a lot of level ups there. Not entirely sure what's going on. Oh, of course it's Archaeological 3. So it wasn't any, wasn't even anything I could get. But let's see what art I learned. Jetstream! Uh, ether Damage and Stun. That's a good art to have. It's actually a purple on me right now, which is good. I don't have to change weapons for that. Anyway, this was 
honestly a relatively short episode, at least compared to last one. But we got another new party member, and we showed off just... Flying is a cool thing. So, next time... We might do chapter... I'm gonna get... Alexa to level 30. Yeah. I want to get Alexa to level 30. So I'm just gonna keep her around doing slightly more difficult missions than I've been doing. And we'll take things from there and figure out what we're gonna do. So, until next time, this is Luxon, signing off.